Are you afraid of or even intimidated by Turner Club? Do you wish it would not exist? Beginner cellists rarely need to play in Turner Club, as all the music for cello beginners is written in bass club. However, there is a lot of advanced cello music which will require good knowledge of tenor clef. After watching this video, you will be able to read several notes in tenor clef. I will share with you very funny <laughs> mnemonic phrases which will help you to memorize all the notes in tenor clef. And I will introduce you to a very clever way to figure out many notes in tenor clef without even thinking about their names. Stay with me and we will learn something new. Welcome to Cellopedia, this is Maxim. Why do cello composers use tenor clef? This clef allows cellists to read higher notes without as many ledger lines as in a bass clef. For example, this B would need four ledger lines in the bass clef. Reading music in a high register with so many ledger lines would be so tedious that there will be very high chance for us to make many mistakes. Just like in a bass clef, all notes in tenor clef come in an alphabetical order. That means that you can use your experience reading bass clef when you have to deal with tenor clef. It's time for us to learn first few notes in tenor clef together. We'll start with the fourth line from the bottom. You see, this line goes through the center of the tenor clef. By the way, tenor clef is also known as clef C. And we can think about another clef C, which is alto clef. It looks the same, but we shouldn't mix them up. The alto clef is positioned right in the middle of music stuff, so the middle part of the alto clef is the third line. But we are not going to play music written for viola, so let's get back to tenor clef. As I mentioned, the fourth line in tenor clef is C, and this is this C. <laughs> Of course, you can also play it in the fourth position on the D string. If we go up from C and think about the next note right in the space above the fourth line, which note would it be? The next letter in the alphabet, D. Of course, we can continue the next note which is the top line is E, and the note right above the top line is F. Here are four notes we have learned so far. C, D, E, and F. And of course, we should go the opposite direction. One note below C, which is the space between third and the fourth lines, is B. Then the middle line will be A. And the space right below the middle line is G. Let's play those four notes one after another. C, B, A, and then G. You see, 
it took us less than two minutes to learn seven different notes in tenor clef. To make learning all those notes a bit easier, and maybe to have even more fun doing that, I will share with you two phrases. First phrase, mnemonic phrase, we will use to remember all the notes in spaces. And this phrase is eat good breakfast daily. This way we have E, G, B, and D. And the second phrase, which I just came up to help you to remember all the notes placed on the lines, starting from the bottom line, is don't forget about cello exercises, which will help us to remember D, F, A, C, and E. Now, you will just have to remember to eat good breakfast daily and don't forget about cello exercises. And you will never have any problems reading in tenor clef. And now it's time for me to share a little secret with you. Very quick way to figure out the name of the note in tenor clef no matter how high or low that note is. And there is the only one condition for success in using this method. You need to know all the notes in the bass clef really well. Let's say you see this note and you completely blanked out. You forgot how tenor clef works. What would be this note in the bass clef? F. To figure out which note would that be in tenor clef, you just need to move your finger one string up. And that would make this note. And this is C, the note you will have to play. Another example, this note, the bottom line. You know, this is G in a bass clef. And you can think about the next string up. To play G, you wouldn't need to use fingers, so you just think about the next string up, which is D. And this is the note you would play to read it in tenor clef. <laughs> You could also use this method figuring out much higher notes. Just remember, it will not give you exact octave, but it will always give you the name of the note. For instance, you see this note, which would be G in a bass clef. Now you need to think about any G on the lower three strings. For instance, I can think about this G. And if I just move my finger one string up, I will get D. And now you have a letter for this high note. Just you have to remember that the octave might be different. So actually this high note, since it's D, will sound this way. Try to play around with this method. Sometimes it will be practical for you to use, sometimes not. But the more tricks you know how to use, the better off you will be. By the way, why does it work this way? Well, the distance between the notes in a bass clef and tenor clef is a perfect fifth. And moving the note from string to string works the same way as transitioning from the bass clef to the tenor clef. As always, all theoretical knowledge you got from books or even videos is worth very little until you put it in action. Don't wait too long. Open your book 
and start playing in tenor clef. Every day it will be easier and easier for you to do. I almost forgot to mention, are you still there? Don't go yet. You might be interested in checking out my Udemy courses. I made number of courses from beginner to intermediate level, so all cello students can learn something new and practice with me. I even put a link in the description of this video with a special discount for Cellopedia audience, so we can learn together even more interesting cello music. My best wishes to you. See you soon.